Let's see if I can do this intro in my best chop top voice from Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Here we go. What's up guys and welcome to the Drum Dums 4000 subscriber Q&A Part 2. Dog will hunt. What's up guys? First off, thank you so much for your patience. I know it's been, uh, I think a week since I put out part one of my Q and A, but I wanted to be, you know, ready and fresh before I went back in to answer the questions. I wanted to, to give you the best of me that I can. And with that said, what I'm going to be doing here is the YouTube questions, the Instagram and the Twitter, my Instagram and Twitter, I'm going to go probably outside to maybe mix it up a bit. So I'll splice those in here along the way. And on my YouTube, I'm going to be sitting right here in the Drum Dumb's evil lair. And I got me a little Word document here because I, I did some homework. I studied because I wanted to make sure I had my answers fresh and ready for you guys. But I do have a few, I think four, that I that asked questions after uh, I had did my homework. So we're going to do those first, actually. The first one is going to be Alexandria Vaughn, my good friend. What are your favorite and least favorite horror remakes, reboots? That's an easy one. Um, I'd say my least favorite is probably The Fog is a really bad, shitty remake. And Deborah Hill actually had a hand in that, God rest her soul. She passed away, I think, before the movie was even released, and she was one of the producers. Uh, so I, I had to go see it just for her. But uh, I'm getting sad right now just thinking about it. And her next question is a good one. If I was uh, trapped on an island, which is my highest rating... Technically, unicorn is my highest rating, but Trapped on an Island is a five or out of five movie. Uh, and if I could take three movies to an island with me, what would they be? Definitely Halloween, uh, definitely The Thing, and probably The Dark Knight, because I wouldn't want three horror movies. Riddler Toes asks uh, about Stephen King's It and the remake. What are my thoughts? You're not going to believe this. I've never seen the original It with Tim Curry. Uh, I'm definitely curious about the remake though. I'll definitely go see it. It looks interesting. But before I see the, the remake, I definitely want to check out the original. Cinema Darling, my southern buddy, she wants to know, uh, if you could live in the south, where would you live? Well, I currently live in Georgia, but it's a tough one. Uh, f part of me says Florida, just because there's a, p a lot of parts of Florida that I like. But I actually do like Georgia too. Um, one thing I like about the south is... There's just a lot of green, and the people are really friendly, and I feel like you can get more done with friendly people. But, you know, I don't discriminate. I love people from the North, too. As a matter of fact, I probably get along with Northeastern people the most because I like their direct attitude. They tell it like it is. My wife is from Connecticut, so she doesn't, uh, she will tell you exactly what she thinks about something, and I respect that. Uh, next one is Chels Bells 91 Erica. And she has one question, and it's about YouTube. She's actually thinking about starting up her own YouTube channel, and she wants to know my advice. And I've answered this a few times, but I will definitely answer it again, because sometimes my answer is different than other times. Um, I would definitely say, do it. As simple as that sounds. Because it took me about six months before I finally actually did it, sat down and did a review. And when I did that first review, I quit about three times in the middle of it. That's how petrified I was and how scary it can be and I'm gonna tell you looking into this camera it's not that bad right now but when I first did it it is weird as shit but the good news is the more you do it the easier it gets right now I'm staring right in the camera right there doesn't bother me one bit took a few tries but yeah so that's my best advice is do it and try to get better at it also I would invest in good equipment um, but if you don't have the money to, to get the good equipment your iPhones actually have great cameras, so that's a great place to start. So really money is no excuse. Everybody has a cell phone these days, so start making videos. You're not gonna be that great at first. I, I guarantee you that, but you're gonna get better. So do it, and, I, and I've never met anybody that regretted doing it. So what's up, guys? Um, I thought for my uh, Twitter and my Instagram questions, I'd make it a little bit interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I got my tablet here and I'm gonna read off some of these questions. Uh, let's start with the uh, Twitter questions. Uh, first off, oh, let me get let me get where the sun's going. Here we go. It's uh this it's almost sunset here, so we're gonna do what we can. But uh, yeah, the lawn gnome he wants to know 
What film are you looking forward to the most uh, in 2017? That would definitely be Alien Covenant. I'm an alien fanatic. I can't wait for that one. Next question is from Atiyah Khan. I hope I said that right. Um, I'm looking over here because my laptop's right here. But if you could direct any DCEU and or MCU movie that has not named its director yet, what would it be? It's funny you ask that. Batman. <laughs> because Ben Affleck just dropped out today. Uh, but no, I probably wouldn't direct any of them because I'm just not at that level yet. This experience has made me curious about filmmaking though, and I'm not as afraid of attempting it as I was before I started doing YouTube. But even when I see the worst movie, Crow Wicked Prayer, um, I still fully respect that director because it is not an easy job. And even Tommy Wiseau, who did The Room, you know what? He made a movie. And you didn't and I didn't. So you got to give him props for that. Or maybe you did. Next question is from my good friend Brian Lomax from Brian Lomax Movie Talk. And his uh, first question is, why do you think there's such a focus on religion often in horror movies? Um, I don't know if I fully agree with that statement. I think that is kind of a subgenre. Those possession movies always seem to deal with religion. I mean, you, I guess you have to. And the funny thing is, that is one of my, one of my least favorite um, subgenres of horror. It doesn't bother me if religion is in horror movies. I just want a good story. That's the biggest thing. Uh, the Conjuring is a great example. Love The Conjuring. And of course, that's a possession movie. There is religion in that one. The Exorcist is one of the greatest horror movies of all time. So it's neither here nor there for me. As long as it's a good story, that's all that matters. His next question is, what type of shoes do I usually run in? Because I am an avid runner. Um, mostly New Balance. But I do... Uh, do a lot of research and I have to try on so many different pairs of shoes because I'm really picky with what I wear and I've returned shoes quite a few times. I have to have the, the right pairs of shoes to run in. You don't want to buy the cheapest pair of shoes that you find. Um, you don't have to buy the most expensive either. But yeah, I, I find that New Balance are the best for my feet. But it all depends on your feet. But he has collapsed arches. Uh, I have foot problems all the time too. I used to run 20 miles uh, a week and now I do maybe I do a 5k uh, once or twice a week uh, more than that my feet can't handle it and the third question I love this question what is the hardest thing to deal with as your channel becomes more and more popular I've gotten a lot more comments and I am so grateful for that but it does take up a lot of time so you have to be good at time management and what I usually do is when I wake up uh, first thing in the morning I'll spend like an hour or two just answering comments because I do like to try to answer all my subscribers. But really that's probably been the hardest. I might be forgetting something. I know that there are trolls out there. Um, that's just something you have to deal with. It doesn't really bother me at all. It's kind of funny actually. And I've actually taken, taken comments that might be considered trollish and tried to find a nugget in there that might benefit me. I actually talked to one guy who gave me kind of a mean, a snide remark comment and we got into a conversation with each other and by the end of that conversation, he subscribed to me. I was pretty proud of myself for that one. So Pete Engstrom um, on Twitter says, uh, any movie reviews that uh, you were worried about not liking the film but were surprised to find that it was good? Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, didn't see that film before I reviewed it and uh, loved the hell out of it. And then The Wailing. Another surprise that um, I constantly kept hearing, matter of fact, Mariana from Impression Blend, she recommended that one. And for some reason, I'm just so leery about foreign movies, but that one surprised me. One of, one of the best of the year, actually. Uh, next question is from Christopher Yu Jean. I hope I said that right. Uh, he wants to know what I do for a living. Um, I recently retired from the military about a year ago uh, next month, and lately I've been uh, a manager at a store. His next question is, if you could remake any horror movie, what would it be? I would be curious to see what a good remake to The Fog would look like because there's so much potential there for atmosphere. But I think John Carpenter directed it so good that you can't top that. And it's probably one of his most underrated films, actually. The atmosphere in that movie and the score is perfect. His next question is, uh, could I review the rest of the Saw series? Yes, that's definitely in the works. Um... I have a lot of reviews on my plate, so many. And if you'll notice lately, I've been putting out probably a video a day and that's not planned. I don't schedule my reviews out for the week. It's all spontaneous, but there's always something in front of me. 
So, and I get a lot of requests. I try to get to those reviews, but I have a lot in front of me. And number four, who's your favorite horror director? John Carpenter. And next question is from Ty Sean Anderson. He wants to know, what are my thoughts on the Star Wars Jedi Purge film spinoff? Uh, and I believe that's the section where uh, all the Jedis are killed off after episode three. I would totally be down with that. I'd really be down with any spinoff if it's done right. Uh, Rogue One is one of my favorite Star Wars movies, funny enough. So yeah, I'd totally be down for that. Uh, his next question is, do you think Jim Gillespie would be a good choice to direct a Scream film? He directed I Know What You Did Last Summer, I think. Um, and those films are very similar, I guess, in tone. I, and they're both millennium, or actually 90s movies. Um, yeah, I'd totally be down for it. It's hard to imagine anybody outside of Wes Craven directing a screen film, but I would be curious. His next question is, um, if any of the stunt guys who played Michael Myers in their prime could play him today, who would it be? I think that's his question. His would be Dick Warlock, but mine would probably be, um, I'm just a big fan of George P. Wilbur. I know his body type isn't the best, but I just like what he brought to uh, Halloween 4 and Halloween 6. There was just something about his walk that was just, it felt... Uh, non-human or inhuman is that right which film uh between halloween 5 and friday the 13th part 6 has the better gothic look i would probably say some scenes in part 6 i love that whole intro with the the frankenstein 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 style of um you know resurrecting jason and there's a very gothic look to that but part five definitely has some gothic elements too, especially the Myers house, which is really weird. His next question is, have I thought about reviewing the the bonus features and interviews for Halloween 4, 5, and 6 from the box set? This guy right here. Uh, those those bonus features, those, docu those documentaries are excellent. Excellent. I've watched them a few times already. I've never really thought about in, uh, reviewing uh, documentaries unless unless it's just something that I have to talk about. But I have so much on my plate that it's not something that I've thought about doing. Um, usually what I'll do is if I'm doing a review on a movie, like say if I'm doing Halloween 4, uh, I'm going to do Halloween 4 Revisited actually in the future. But uh, if there's something in those documentaries that I find interesting that's worthy of mentioning in the review, that's what I'll do. His next question is, what do you think makes a good whodunit slasher? Um, it all comes down to the story and if you have an interesting killer. And it's a hard thing to do. I think Scream did it very well. Scream is one of the best as far as whodunits because you have to be invested in the the person who did it. If you don't care about that person who did it, uh, or even if it's a complete surprise, then it's gonna it's not gonna work. Uh, and his next question, I love this question, is uh, what or who inspired me to to make killer flicks? And gotta give a big shout out, Mariana from Impression Blend. She actually sent me a message saying, hey, I've been looking at all these horror groups and I don't see one for our group, so would you make one? And I took it and I ran with it. She even came up with the name Killer Flicks. So thank you, Mariana, for that. And Killer Flicks has, it's given me so much. I've made so many friends on that site. It turned into something I never thought it would and we're almost a thousand members. So it's crazy to me, but I've made a lot of friends on that site, it's, it's insane. Okay, uh, next up we're gonna go horror movie review 773. What got you into horror movies and how have they changed your life? Oh God, boy, that's a big one. Um, really, to, to get right down to it, it's just being afraid. Um, I guess I, I like that fear emotion more than any other emotion, which is, sounds crazy. But I think horror movies, they just, there's there's more of a direct result with horror movies, uh, more of an emotional result with horror movies than any other genre in my mind. Um, and they can often be like a roller coaster ride, sometimes even more than an action movie. Uh, and from a very early age of being afraid of horror movies, I have been completely hooked and it's hard to explain in detail why. Next question is from Metal Horror Pack and he wants to know, do I think Danny Carey from Tool is uh, one of the best drummers ever? Absolutely. I think what makes a great drummer is not how fast you can play. I think it's how creative you can get. And I think Tool's drumming is probably the most creative drumming I've ever heard. So yeah, I think Danny Carey is definitely one of the best drummers out there. It's hard to say the best. I don't think you can nail that down, but he's definitely up there. I love his creativity. His next question is, do you like pizza? Hell yeah, I love pizza. Best breadsticks? 
uh, I've ever had is going to be Flippers uh, in Orlando, Florida. There are probably other locations too, but if you're ever down in Orlando, make sure you go to Flippers. You'll get the best breadsticks you've ever had. You won't even need the pizza. As far as pizza goes, um, I just like brick oven pizza. It's sad to say, but Sbarro's is probably one of my favorites, but I haven't had like Chicago deep dish pizza, so you guys will have to actually tell me what's the best uh, on that front, but I can help you out with breadsticks. Am I excited for the next season of Game of Thrones? You damn right I am. Oh, I love that show so much. It gets better and better for me every season. Can't wait to see what happens next, and I'm hoping this is not the last season. What is your favorite episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Um, the episode where Buffy sends Angel to hell. Great episode. Have you seen The Nightmare Man? No, I haven't, um, but I will definitely check it out. He says it's a highly overlooked horror film, so The Nightmare Man, I'll definitely add it to my list. Uh, number five, do you like Rob Zombie's music? Yeah, I love Rob Zombie's music. I saw him in concert uh, two years ago, and he has one of the best stage setups I've ever seen because he has like all these horror icons like Frankenstein and the mummy, Bride of Frankenstein, as his uh, back, back lot, I guess, or stage setup. I stood literally uh, 10 feet from Rob Zombie because he actually jumped out in the audience and was just singing while the audience was holding him up. Now I was literally like 10 feet from him. It was really cool. And his last question, what is the best Blu-ray in your collection? Maybe this one. Okay, Jack at Master Exposed um, asked, what inspired me to make videos? I could not have daily conversations like I do on uh, YouTube and social media, really, with uh, movie lovers. YouTube gave me that outlet. And I have, it's, it's paid back in, in so many ways. Uh, I made so many friends and yeah, in my normal life, I couldn't really have that. Uh, I would just get that dog that's just been showing a card trick look when I would get passionate about a movie for the most part. I mean, I do have movie fans, uh, as friends, but, uh, not like on social media and YouTube. Okay. Next set of questions are from Beavis PDX and he wants to know, do you like hair metal slash butt rock? I've never heard it called butt rock before, but that sounds right. <laughs> um, I grew up in the eighties and yes, I listened to hair metal. It was probably my favorite type of music at the time, which is kind of sad, but yeah, I listened to rat. I listened to Motley Crue. I listened to all those bands. I liked uh, a band called enough's enough. That was a that's a really good hair metal band that I I loved and one of my favorites is a, a band called Shotgun Messiah. They only had a couple albums out, but I actually met the band in a mall in Denver, Colorado, and all four of them signed my CD. As a matter of fact, I had to go out and get that CD. I want you guys to see this, but this is the CD. Uh, I hope that zooms in. Let me turn my viewer around so I can see. Okay, so here's that CD. And I'm going to show you the signed portion of it. There it is. All four band members signed it for me. Really freaking cool. Uh, his next question is, when I was in the service, uh, did I ever come close to being seriously injured or killed? Thankfully, no. Um, I was actually in Saudi Arabia in 1996 when Kobar Towers got bombed and killed 19 airmen but I wasn't uh, in Daharan. I was actually at uh, a different site that was about a couple hours away. And in Afghanistan, uh, I was part of a convoy. And when we came back, I think 20 minutes later, it got bombed. But uh, that's the closest I've ever came to, uh, to danger while I was in the military. So luckily my brothers in arms always kept me safe. Oh, man, I am just killing the monster. Uh, it, I'm getting through these though, guys. Uh, next question is from Future Filmmaker. Um, he wants to know, uh, could you show off your DVD and Blu-ray collection? Uh, as a matter of fact, what you see on the screen right now is uh, my Blu-ray and DVD collection. But if you want to see like me going through each title, I'll post a link to my playlist. Uh, I've pretty much shown off uh, my entire DVD collection and I do my Blu-rays by genre in different videos. And I think the only thing I haven't shown in that is drama and comedies. Uh, but the rest, it should be in there in the uh, playlist. So I'll post a link to that. His next question is, do I think Spider-Man Homecoming, Justice League, and Wonder Woman will be good? They all three look really interesting. Um, I'm a little worried about Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, I'm hoping it's great, though. I'm, I mean, I'm worried about all of them because I haven't seen them. But uh, Justice League is the one I'm looking forward to the most. Um, and I'm hoping that one's really good. Uh, next question, Mr. Nerdista. Uh, he wants to know, what is my favorite black and white film? And that would have to be Psycho. Psycho is just phenomenal. 
Uh, and I, I'm embarrassed to say I haven't seen enough black and white films. I've seen a few, but I'd really like to, to actually quench my thirst and watch a few more classics like that. It's a Wonderful Life is a great one too. Next question is from uh, Nocturnal Toothbrush. That's Mason, my good friend. He wants to know, um, what do I want the look of the new Myers masks to be in the new movie? I want them to stick with the original look. Uh, my favorite look of the mask is actually the Halloween 6 mask. And I wouldn't be opposed to them using this mask again, which I'm sure they won't. But I like uh, the, you know, I like the detail in this mask. You know how you can see the shadows and whatnot. I like a Myers mask that's not just straight up white. I like to see some definition in there. Next question is from Jack Grimson. And uh, he wants to know... What advice uh, from personal experience do you have for new channels? Don't be afraid to try different things. Uh, definitely be yourself. That's the biggest thing. And I'd say try to be consistent with your content. Um, I probably put out too much content. That's because I'm constantly wanting to express myself, I guess is the best way to put it. But yeah, if you're going to do it, do it. Uh, but it does take hard work. So be ready to work hard if you want your channel to go anywhere. Also, how did I get Levi? Um, let me grab Levi for you guys. Okay, this is Levi. Um, we got Levi in 2010, and when we got him, he could fit in my hand. That's how small he was. He's a white miniature schnauzer, and he only likes uh, this family. He doesn't like anybody else. If he sees you, he will try to rip your face off. That's the way he is. So if you were to ever actually see him, you wouldn't see this version of Levi. You'd see, I guess, the evil version of Levi. But uh, yeah, Levi is awesome. Next question is from Chad Leach. He wants to know, am I religious into politics? You know what? I don't get into politics on Facebook. I don't post. I'm, I don't consider myself Republican or Democrat. I, I guess I'm not well versed into politics. It's probably obvious if you know me uh, from Facebook and Twitter. I don't talk about politics that much. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, am I religious? I am a Christian, uh, but I'm just not one of those people that would approach you and say, you know, have you found Jesus? I'm not one of those guys. His next question is, did I name my son Michael after Michael Myers? No, I did not. Um, my wife actually named him Michael. I, uh, I gave him his middle name. Next question, what has been the greatest adventure of your life? Um, YouTube has definitely been a great adventure. Um, when, I was, uh, when I first joined the military, uh, I went up hiking into the mountains, which is something I was always kind of afraid to do. And that was a really cool experience. Uh, next question, what is my favorite inspirational quote? A lot of good ones, but I think my favorite is, is actually from Rocky Balboa. I'm not going to quote the whole thing, but it ends with, it ain't how hard you hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And I love that quote. It's, there's so much meaning behind it. As silly as it sounds being from a Rocky movie. But when I gave my retirement speech in the military, I quoted that quote. All right, guys, uh, we're going to continue with the Instagram questions. Uh, Jake Percy 2003 wants to know what inspired you to start your channel. I just answered that one. Uh, what gave you the idea on the style of your reviews? Um, I, I don't really think I have a style. I just uh, it's my personality. I'm not trying to be fake in my reviews whatsoever, but I will say don't be afraid to experiment. Um, if you look at my first review and you look at my last review, probably two completely different reviews, and that's because Every time I do a review, I look at my last review and I try to build upon that or try to make it better or even experiment. So, yeah. Uh, Bro1997 wants to know what is the most underrated and overrated horror movie. Um, I would say underrated. There's probably a lot of, uh, of contenders there, but I would say The Descent. I don't know if it's underrated, but I think The Descent is like a five out of five movie. And when you do mention it, everybody says it's good but it's you know when people talk about horror they don't usually bring up the descent unless somebody else you know mentions it to them i guess so the, the descent is highly underrated um overrated um i would say i, I actually had to pull up um, a list of highly overrated horror movies uh on the internet <clears throat> but um what's really coming to my mind i didn't see this on here was scream 2 and i do like scream 2 it's a good movie but there are people that make Scream 2 out to be like one of the best sequels ever, and I don't think so. Um, it's good, but I don't think it touches the first one. David Rose says, what, are your, what is your favorite horror franchise that not many people have heard of? I would say, um, it's a, that's a tough one. I had to do some research on this, but I would say probably Wolf Creek. 
Um, and I've only seen the first one, so I know that's not a real answer. But uh, the first one is so good, and I'm thinking the second one's probably pretty good too. Um, as a matter of fact, I think Zach versus the Blu-ray Mountain has said that the second one's really good. I think the Hatchet series is actually the opposite of that. I think that one's overrated. I don't like the Hatchet series that much at all. Next question is from Daniel Westbrook, uh, active member of Killer Flex, and uh, he wants to know what I would want to see the slasher uh, genre come back like Friday the 13th and um, Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street. As long as it's been, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I would love to see it, like a brand new franchise, you know, not those actual franchises. I think that's what his question is. There have been attempts like uh, Hatchet, which I just mentioned is a good example, but I don't think they've achieved that yet. Those three uh, icons are just so tough to, to touch. Yeah, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's going to happen. I hope it does. Samuel Klinger, one word, wants to know any films that you hate but people love and any films that you love but people hate. Levi wants to go potty. Um, come on, Levi, let's go potty. Now, as far as films that um, I love that people hate, there's probably tons of horror movies, but um, I do really have a great time with the Resident Evil and Underworld series. And as far as films that I hate that people Love, I, I don't, that's a tough one, but I say I'll, the young adult movies, I'm not a big fan of at all. And I know that they really have their fans in that franchise. Like uh, Hunger Games, I don't hate them, but uh, they just really do nothing for me. I kind of liked Catching Fire. Uh, movie Dude 90, uh, Zach, he wants to know what are my favorite bands? I had to check Levi to make sure he wasn't dead. I do that sometimes in the middle of the night. But yeah, my favorite bands are definitely Tool, Deftones, Joy Division, Killers, I uh, love Kings of Leon. Uh, Shotgun Messiah, which that CD I showed you, I love that band. Uh, and I'm sure I'm missing a few. I love all different types of music, really, except country. I love 80s New Wave. Um, lately, I've been into EDM very much. I go into Pandora and I type in Tracy Lords. Uh, Tracy Lords actually ha had an album in the mid 90s, and it is fantastic. Uh, and that one is uh, it's an EDM album. Next question is from Mr. Nerdista, highly talented YouTuber. If you haven't if you haven't checked him out. Definitely check him out. He does video essays, insanely good. If you're stuck on an, on an island with someone that has never watched a film in their life, what movie would you make them watch as their gateway into cinema? Uh, Halloween, of course, uh, if, if I thought that they would like horror, but um, others would be like Taxi Driver, Rocky, Zodiac is a great one. I guess I would pick one movie from my favorite directors like David Fincher, uh, James Cameron, John Carpenter. You know, my favorite movie out of those guys and say, hey, you need to watch these. Next question is from Devon or Jula. I hope I said that right. And uh, he wants to know, do I consider The Craft a horror movie? It's more of a, I guess it's a thriller type movie. Uh, but I consider thrillers to be happily in that, that horror genre. Like over at Killer Flicks, we talk thrillers all the time. And he wants to know if I would consider doing a review on that one. Absolutely. Uh, I like The Craft. That's a fun movie. Next question is from Jason Hamilton. He wants to know... Uh, what Funko Pop that isn't uh, available yet do I wish would be available? I, I'd say Celine from Underworld is a great one. I'd love to have, you know, I think uh, characters that have a, a really cool visual style are great Funkos, and she would definitely be a good Funko. Also, Alice from Resident Evil. Um, and if these are out, let me know, but I don't think these are out. And he also wants to know, did I know that there's a Myers house in North Carolina? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. And I have the guy on my Facebook friends list. I've always wanted to go out there and see that house, but I've actually went and seen the original Halloween house in Pasadena, California. As a matter of fact, I posted pictures in my recent um, Halloween Revisited review. I just dropped that today. And guys, check out that video if you can, because if you ask me what, um, I think somebody did ask me this, what video am I most proud of? That would be my answer. I worked my ass off on this video because I, my first review for Halloween was only a quick five minutes. It's hard to review movies that you love so much. And, um, I, I worked really hard on this one. So definitely check this one out. And he also wants to know, uh, am I a Falcons fan? I'm not really a sports fan, to be honest. Uh, my father is a huge, uh, college football fan. He likes, uh, NFL too, but um, I, I've never been a huge sports fan, although I do watch the Super Bowl. I enjoy watching the Super Bowl for the commercials, of course, uh, and the new movie trailers. Oh, Horror Movie Zone wants to know what are my favorite movies from the 80s? Um, I would definitely say like Evil Dead, Pet Cemetery, um, Rocky IV. There's so many choices, actually. Return of the Living Dead, Night of the Creeps. 
uh, the 80s is my, that's my heyday. So there's, I, I love the John Hughes movies. So many great movies uh, out of that decade. And he also wants to know my favorite TV shows uh, are going to be Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Banshee's really good. Uh, I'm a massive, massive South Park fan. And um, I also loved um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Next question is a great question from my good friends, the Horror Addicts. Definitely check out their channel if you haven't. And uh, they want to know, how do I decide which movie to review? And uh, really, it, it could be a few different things. But uh, by feel is one thing. Um, if, if a movie is on my mind, uh, because my mind wanders constantly. And, and a lot of times when I'm running, um, I will get inspired to do reviews. Because when you exercise, your mind just kind of races. And I get a lot of ideas from when I'm running. And requested reviews is another one. Uh, sometimes I'm like, I need to find something to review. And I'll look at requested reviews. And if, if one of those pops out at me at the time, then I'll go ahead and review it. But I got to be in the zone. I will never put out a review that I am not willing to give 110% on. If, if my heart's not in it, I'm not going to do it. I have to be fully invested in it. Like recently, I'm in my Chucky mood right now. And so I'm doing the, the Chucky reviews. And I'm totally into it right now. I'm having a blast. I just watched uh, part two today, and I'm about to get my review uh, my review out for that real soon. Next question is from Little Lamb Chop, and she wants to know, what is my biggest guilty pleasure film and song? Um, I don't really have, I don't believe in guilty pleasures for films. Um, if I like a film, I own it. But I guess the best way to answer that would be, there are some movies that are really bad movies that I enjoy the hell out of. Like, I recently watched uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Not a good movie at all. Horrible. But I did have a blast watching it because of how whacked out crazy it is. And as far as a song, it's hard to pick one because I, I like a good beat in a song. And there are a lot of bad songs out there that are repetitive that I might like. Um, a lot of 80s songs are kind of cheesy, but I, I'm from the 80s, so I love 80s music. Uh, Dennis Fries asks, what made me want to start reviewing movies on YouTube? I believe I answered that one. But just a foot stomp, um, I, I wanted to get passionate about movies um, through another outlet because I, in my, my normal friends, they're not as big movie geeks as I am. So on social media and on YouTube, I can do that. Like with all you guys, you guys are just as passionate about movies as I am. So that's a big reason why I started reviewing movies. And to, to conquer our personal fear, really, too. Next question is from Tom Cabler. Uh, do I get any help or opinions on doing my videos? 95% of the time, no. I, I pretty much do it myself. I do all the editing myself, but after I do a review, I will take it to my wife and I'll let her watch it and she will give me her God's honest opinion. If it sucks, she will tell me it sucks and that's why I take it to her. So I get a lot of tips, um, you know, as far as like if it's good or not from her. And even my son, sometimes I'll, if I'm working on a, a review, like I did my Dark Knight trilogy, and I would take, take it to my son, and I'd say, hey, what do you think about this uh, layout or this intro or whatever? And he would tell me, you need to change this, this, and this. And so I do that. So luckily, I got family members that are just completely honest with me. And for those that are wanting to start a YouTube channel, find somebody that will be completely honest with you. Don't find somebody that's going to sugarcoat you. Next question is from Jay Anthony, Mesmerized for Life, and he wants to know what is... My scariest, my scariest memory as a child, and um, that memory of seeing Friday the 13th Part 3 when I was 10 years old, I, I could not uh, look at the movie. I looked at maybe two seconds of the movie the whole time. I was petrified, and I, and I loved every second of it. I just didn't know it at the time. Next question is, do I believe in ghosts? I think there's a lot of evidence, evidence out there to prove that they do exist. So, um, and I am pretty open-minded, so... Yeah, I mean, if they did exist, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, have I ever played with a Ouija board? No, I haven't, actually. There's the question. What is the my favorite movie review that I've done so far? Just answered it. My Halloween Revisited review. I had a blast, and I, I wanted to get it right, because Halloween is my favorite movie ever. And I put everything into that review that I could. It, you, you might watch it and think it's not perfect, but... It's 13 minutes long, so I, I wanted to make sure I had I said everything I wanted to say, and I did. Um, do you have nightmares from watching horror movies? No, I don't get afraid of any movies really at all. I can tell if something is scary or suspenseful, but I don't go home at night uh, being afraid or I don't have nightmares. I've said before, the only time I've ever had nightmares was about Michael Myers, 
and that was when I was younger, but I still don't, I don't have nightmares even about Myers anymore. Uh, Rain Coffee and Mayfair wants to know, what is my favorite kill from the uh, Halloween series? And I think I answered this on the Killer Flicks one, but it's definitely Brady from, um, from Halloween 4. But there are a lot of good kills in the Halloween series, but if I had to guess right offhand, that's definitely one of the best. I like that one just because of how visceral it, it is. Uh, for Scream, I would say the Omar Epps death in Scream 2 when he gets the knife to the ear. Nightmare on Elm Street uh, is going to be Joey's death from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 for obvious reasons. And Friday the 13th, that's a tough one, uh, but um, I would say Jason X, the head bash, is definitely a top contender. Next question is from Ryan, 1988. Um, I answered his first question, what are some movies that are highly praised but you find overrated and don't like? I'll say Star Trek, though. And I, that's not a real answer because I've never seen any of the original Star Treks. But it's those are movies that I just cannot watch for some reason. Like, I, I, I won't even, like, try. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I'm such a huge Star Wars fan. But I do like the, the new ones. So that's a horrible answer. Go ahead and give me a dislike because I, I deserve it. And what are, my, what are some of my favorite uh, food and drinks when I'm watching movies? I believe I answered this one on the Killer Flicks, but I'll, I'll go ahead and say it again for you. Uh, I usually get nachos, I usually get Bunch of Crunch, and um, I usually get a Sprite or a Mountain Dew. But actually, I gave up drinking soda. Two weeks ago, I gave up drinking soda because I'm trying to lose this. And let me just say, guys, if you drink soda, um, after a couple days, I, I didn't crave it anymore, and I feel, I feel much better. Next question is from Witsy Tube, and he wants to know if I could visit any horror location, what would it be and why? Um, well, the reason why would be because I'm a, such a huge fan of the movie, and I recently visited uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 in Covington, Georgia, but I'd, I'd love to, uh, to visit the Friday the 13th locations. I just like campgrounds. I'd also like to visit Sleepaway Camp, uh, even though I hear that that's not even there anymore. There might be like remnants of it. Anonymous person says, what movie uh, do you think really got you into film? I would probably say Pulp Fiction. I think that's when I really started getting into film. Like I went from average movie lover to, wow, look at the way this guy's directing this movie. I had never seen anything like what Tarantino was doing in Pulp Fiction. So that piqued my curiosity and made me start appreciating film a lot more. Rob Gallagher asks, have I ever walked out of a movie? I don't think I have. I, I'm sure there's been a couple times where I've wanted to, but usually I'll just, because I paid the money, I'll just tough it out and I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Um, I don't think I have though. And he also wants to know if I drink, what is my favorite alcoholic beverage? I don't drink at all. Um, I've, I've probably had, I've never even had a full beer in my whole life. So yeah, I've, I had a bad experience when I was a child. Um, my uncle had me on his knee and he gave me a drink of his, uh, whatever he was drinking, a beer, and the taste was so bad, like it would be for a child, that it stayed with me. And so I think that's the reason. The, the smell of alcohol, it makes me nauseous. And yeah, boy, uh, has a question. What is my favorite uh, Giallo movie? And uh, embarrassingly enough, I haven't seen uh, any of those movies, uh, including Suspiria. Um, but I definitely want to check out Suspiria, and I definitely want to check out uh, Tenebrae, because I haven't seen that one either. Okay, I had to recharge my camera battery, so I'm back at it. I have a few questions left. From Stig, he wants to know, if you could see any classic movie on the big screen, what would it be? Uh, my local theater has actually been doing flashback cinema. Uh, I just saw Aliens a couple weeks ago, uh, but I've seen Halloween on the big screen a couple times over the past few years. Um, Jaws, I saw. Uh, so if there's another movie that I would love to see, I would love to see like the Friday the 13th movies on the big screen. I'd love to see Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D. Uh, on the big screen, that'd be amazing. His next question is, if I could give up uh, my day job and do uh, YouTube full time, would I do it? Hell yes. Next question is from Taylor Castle and he wants to know uh, what universally acclaimed horror movie do I hate? Um, I don't think there's any universally acclaimed horror movie that I hate because I haven't seen any of the, the classics uh, from the 50s, you know, the Vincent Price movies and whatnot. Um, so, if, if, if there would be one that I would hate, it'd probably, probably be one that I, I couldn't relate to. Uh, but I, I, I don't want to lie to you. I, don't, I really don't have an answer. But to give you kind of a partial answer, I don't really like the torture porn movies. Uh, I don't know how universally acclaimed they are, whichever the best one is. I just It's hard for me to get into those types. 
types of films. Next question is from Dylan Bean, and uh, he just hit 100 subscribers, and that is such an awesome feeling. I remember when I hit 100 subscribers, I was completely elated, so congratulations, Dylan. Uh, nowhere to go but up. Uh, his first question is, how do I approach my reviews? Well, I like to I like to watch the movie first, just to have it fresh in my mind. And um, I, this notepad, I, I've had it pretty much since I started my journey uh, two years ago. Um, so yeah, I always take notes on this and I'll, I'll usually put it right down here on my chair. You don't see it in the frame, but I'll have it down there in my chair. And every now and then I'll just kind of peek down to make sure uh, I'm in line. There's been a couple times where I haven't had to really uh, look at my ideas, but if there's a lot of thoughts that I want to get out, then I'll definitely look down. Like my recent Halloween revisited, I had a whole list of uh, things that I wanted to talk about. But yeah, my biggest thing is I have to be in the moment. I got to be prepared for it. Uh, if I'm not like in the zone, I guess you could say, then I don't do it. And I usually drink a monster, which is probably bad, but I got to have some kind of uh, liquid energy, I guess, while I'm doing it. And I like to um, throw a little bit of spontaneity in there too. I don't like to be completely structured, I guess, for lack of a better term. I like to actually have some spontaneity, some surprises in there. So a lot of my reviews, uh, especially the ones that I try to throw in a little bit more comedy, most of that stuff is just spontaneous stuff that just comes to my mind as I'm doing it. His next question is, how do you deal with negative comments or dislikes? I try to make some kind of positivity out of it. Um, like my, what I just uh, said a few questions ago. I think the ultimate goal is to try to bring one of them uh, to become a subscriber of yours. If they have something intelligent to say, then I'll, I definitely listen to them. Now, just, just being a troll just to be a complete dick or asshole, I just ignore them usually, but if there's something in there, like a nugget that I can use to my benefit, then I will definitely, I will definitely do that. And a lot of times they're just surprised that you even respond to them. Some, I think that just kind of throws them off. And his last question is, how do you market your channel to increase your viewers? Social media, you have to use that. Uh, even Instagram, Instagram is actually a big one. It's, it's probably helped push my channel quite a bit. And you can kind of tell that by how many followers you get, like uh, the rate, like my Facebook Drum Dums page grows the least. Like I'm only at 300 followers on, on, on uh, Facebook for Drum Dums, but on like Instagram, Instagram grows really fast actually. And uh, Twitter is kind of hit and miss for me. And you gotta be careful on Twitter too, because I kind of had a bad experience in the past with when I first started doing reviews, uh, this was my fault. I would actually, um, tag other channels that I considered myself friendly with and so that way they would retweet, retweet it and I, I wasn't sure if that was considered rude or not so I would say make sure that what you're doing is okay among the community because when I was when I was first doing this there was there was a few things I wasn't sure of so now when I do it I don't really tag people unless they want me to tag them and the last question is from Mesa and he wants to know what is my favorite Jurassic Park film um, got to be the first. The The first Jurassic Park is classic. His favorite is uh, Jurassic Park 3. Uh, I haven't watched that one in a long time, so I, I, I'm actually looking forward to watching that one again. But that's it, guys. That is the last question. Wow, this is probably going to be 45 minutes to an hour. I, this is going to be a long one. So anyway, thank you so much for all the questions. I really appreciate it. If I missed any questions, which is highly possible, just shoot me some questions down in the comments. Um, just ones that I missed. <laughs> uh, I'll do another Q&A when I hit 5,000 probably. But yeah, if I missed any, please let me know in the comments. And I want to try to answer everybody's questions. So anyway, guys, um, make sure you jump on over to Killer Flicks. Become a member. Uh, thank you so much for all that you guys do for my channel. Uh, if you look down below, you can see all my social media links. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, guys. And drum them out.